leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. No wonder Alexander the Great once said, I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. I am afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. Welcome to Corporate Image Profile, brought to you courtesy to Shima Media House, a profound affirmation of the culture, structure, and nature of organization. I am Eric Tins, Courage Power. Stay with me as I bring to you a visual document on good governance. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you arrive on time. It is a Toshima Media House production of Corporate Image Profile, and I am Arif Tins Courage Power, and we are spotlighting good governance. What then is good governance? I would say it is a government that is able to affect every class of the lead. Well, let's hear what Comrade Ruben Izeze has to say on the subject matter. Good governance is keeping it simple keeping it very simple. Well, that's quintessential develop, uh, definition of democracy. Government of the people, by the people, for the people. That is good governance. Where the people take precedence, the people must come first. And if the people come first, you won't think of stealing public money. If the people come first, you won't want to break laws. If the people come first, you want to make laws that will drive development. You want to make laws that will improve the lives of the people. If the people come first, if you're building a hospital, you will build a hospital according to specification. If you're building a road, you will build that road according to engineering measurements. The people, where the people take preeminence in every policy decision of government, that is good governance. I think I share his view. When the people take preeminence in every decision making in government, that is good governance. At the federal level in Nigeria, the slogan is change begins with you and I. And at the state level in Delta State, it is prosperity for all Deltans. This cannot be achieved if left alone in the hands of those in government. I believe it could be achieved with a collective effort from both the leaders and the led. The leaders initiate the programs, the led key into it. Education, they say, is the key to unlocking the society of our dream. Some have the drive for formal education but lack the financial or intellectual ability to do so. What then should the government do about this class of people? Leave them to become good for nothing? Of course, no, hence vocational education. 
Vocational education is a form of education that allows you to learn a trade or craft and get certified to function in such an institution or become an entrepreneur. Toshima Press Crew was fortunate to afford the presence of the Executive Secretary to the Delta State Vocational and Technical Educational Board, Comrade Michael Akopiri, and it is astonishingly impressive all the government has done to improve vocational education. Let us see for ourselves. My name is Michael. Michael Akbobiri, I'm the Executive Secretary, Data State Technical and Vocational Education Board. We want to raise an army of entrepreneurs. Before now, we were giving out small loans, microcredit to individuals. We just call them, interview them, give them loan. And we found out that some of them were using them to marry second wives. You even give them starter packs, they were using them to do other selling them to do other things. So we now saw that a critical factor is that those people that were empowered financially were not empowered skillfully. You, 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 you want to do a business, at least you know about the business. If you want to fry a car, you need to know all the, the ingredients that you need to fry a car. You need to be trained. So that's why we're bringing the training component to all our empowerment. We don't give one error in this state to anybody as empowerment until the person is trained in the business he wants to establish. The business might be as cheap as selling crayfish. We want to know whether you know the different types of crayfish, you know where to source the crayfish, you know the marketing trend, the price fluctuation in, in, in crayfish selling. So that's since we started adding the component of training to to our empowerment, we started using results. Then the training is not just skill training. We dedicate five to ten percent of the training on attitude, managerial skills, entrepreneurship skills. Because we find out that people, somebody may go, be a good mechanic, but if he have wrong attitude, he will start business and the business will collapse. He may not know how to talk to his clients. He may not know how to manage people's behavior. So we we, we are taking that uh, seriously too. So we find out that when you do that, people are responding and they have self value. So even you prepare them to take loan and know that loan are repayable. But one of the things people think is that any money from government is uh, a, a, a wolf, it's national cake, this is my share. But those monies that the state is giving were taken from CBN on a 9% repayment loan. So, and the state has guaranteed them if people don't pay, it falls back to the state. And later, if the state says we don't have money, people don't understand, they think politicians are lying. So, these are some of the things that have cumulative effects. So, when you, the person has value, he's trained, he has been trained on leadership, he has been trained on uh, entrepreneurship, he has been trained on skill. There is a different way that person thinks. So, when you're even exposing him to business loans, he knows that he is an entity that can manage uh, business. I want to say that um, distance is not a barrier. Uh, we have hostel facilities here. We have hostel facilities in Sapele. We have hostel facilities in Ofagbe. So it does not mean that because it's not in your community, we have world-class hostel facilities that uh, uh, both male and females uh, can stay. Egbukodo was um, have partly sponsored by the United Nations and Delta States. It was a partnership. And uh, the technical aspect of Ekbokudu was handled by the United Nations uh, Operation Office. So, and they had a contract for a number of years, and that expired. So it means that they are pulling out, and the owners to run the place technically now falls back to Delta State Government. And that period, coincidentally, was a transition period from one government to to other. It's a. Uh, I, I should just leave the past and tell you the updates. Update is that uh, you know. United Nations Development Partners have uh, officially handed it over to the state. They've done all the inventory. The state has taken over. Uh, as I speak to you now, snakes are no more dead. The place has been cleared. Uh, secondly, a committee headed by the chairman of the Civil Service Commission is in place to look at staffing, which is key because um, the staff they were paid international rate before we're going to pay them state rate now so we we'll have to meet with them and know if they agree with our terms uh, they have a uh, first choice of offer those who have been trained before who are there then if there's a shortage we'll make up with uh, uh, relevant staff from the, the civil service so uh, plus or minus we have a mandate to reopen the place before the end of this year uh, they eat good food because we have catering department here. What they pay for the hostel facility takes care of all that. And what I'm saying, why I say they have good food, because it's not going to be a source, it's, uh, it's the, the department here. So they know how to do it best. And uh, uh, the students will be well taken care of. 
and uh, when they come as hostelers, they have a double advantage because they can even uh, participate in the evening sessions of the vocational training. So, uh, parents are advised to spend their money wisely by sending their children. Anyway, if you are in Lagos, you are in Kaduna, you are in Abuja, your child can come and stay in the hostel. There is a team in the job creation office that do mentorship and monitoring. Mm. And uh, one of the things is that we set you up in a way that you you still have to grow your business. If the business is going to do 100 years, we we'll give you what we we'll start for 50 years. I will monitor you and mentor you. At the time you complete 50 years, what will be re- uh, necessary for the next 50 years is released. And you know that you have to get to 100. So you are hungry to meet 50 so that you can get the balance to hit the 100. So those are some of the checks and balances we have put in place. But like you know, nobody gets 100%. We just want to hit 1995. So if 5% of people were empowering, are using the money to marry second wife or buy things, and 95% that's sure, uh, then it's, it's an excellent. Wow, there is even a plan for graduates. The Senate has grant, granted us a plan to run six months practical training. So if you are a graduate, you are a professor, you want to be a welder, you can come here and give you uh, six months training and you earn a modular system. One thing that seriously caught my attention is the collaboration with Mobile Tutors Private Limited India in offering digital learning solutions. Let us hear from the Vice President of the company, Sentium Kuma. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, slot of uh, getting me to uh, you know, talk about uh, the agenda of you know me uh, joining hands with uh, the DSTV board. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is Senthil. Uh, I'm from India. Uh, Chennai uh, is the place that I'm I'm from, and uh, I represent a company called Mobile Tutor Private Limited. I'm the vice president of the company, and we are in collaboration with the Delta State Technical Education Board in offering a digital learning solution. Uh, for all your Deltans who study from uh, the institutions under this board. Uh, What we offer is basically uh, a visual training model uh, on on their mobile phones. So training becomes uh, digital, uh, making the students learn from their phones itself. Because we know youngsters today are all hooked on to mobile phones in large. Uh, They spend most of the time there. So we want to bring education, learning, uh, to the browsers and the, and the mobile uh, phones basically to make learning pretty interesting because usually uh, uh, learning is considered you know a, a boring stuff by the youngsters today so we want to kind of include fun in learning so that's when you know we have introduced uh, audio visual uh, learning methodology uh, to the DSTV board in con- converting the entire syllabi of them uh, using animations and uh, visuals and all that, uh, using uh, audio-visual technique and making them, you know, learn, which also offers them assessments, uh, you know, chat facility, you know, raise doubts, and to learn from anywhere they are. So basically, learning is not restricted within the campus of the institutions, but now we are taking learning beyond the classrooms, beyond the campuses. And uh, I must uh, say at this point in time, uh, the DSTV board, when they came to know that there is a solution available like this, they embraced this particular solution uh, to bring in prosperity, to bring in uh, you know, successful careers to all your Deltans who study from here. Sad though, the mentality of Deltans to vocational education. We have issues of uh, mentality. Uh, the people uh, do not see yet fully embrace the fact that the only way to create prosperity is not to dash people money but to give them relevant um, education is it's, it's a big issue we have issues with um, staff uh, we still have staff that um, are of 19th century in the 21st century we need to teach them we need to train them we need to upgrade them uh, it's, it's a big issue um, we have uh, issues with um, uh, equipment, uh, like I saw staff who train them to operate the equipment. Some, some, you'll be surprised what we came in, some of the staffs that we met that uh, uh, are supposed to teach students, they even see the equipment as monuments. Uh, the 
did alternative to practicals. So they just come and name the parts of the date machine. I say this parts can do this, you can do this, you can do that. Oh yeah, do it, let me see. Uh, say just know it so that you can write it in the examination and pass. So we said no. The whole vision of technical education will fail if these equipments are not put uh, into use. So uh, that is a challenge. We have been used to a kind of education that is uh, uh, it's just certificates without relevant skills and it's a new concept. It takes time for people to go in and one of the things we are doing is to reach out to um, media houses like yours to tell the people the new story. Uh, it takes some time for people to know that uh, education is not just about acquiring certificates. Education is about having self-sufficiency. And that is what technical and vocational education is all about. So our appeal is for the people to embrace. We are even doing advocacy meetings to traditional leaders, church leaders, market leaders, uh, town leaders uh, in our place. So to let them know, for instance, this place, plus the vocational and technical aspect, we can we can graduate almost 5,000 people a year. Hmm. But um, the capacity so far uh, is uh, about 10% of, of that uh, capacity. And uh, it, it, this is even very good compared to other places. We have places where we are doing 5% capacity. So uh, the world needs to know what is happening. And our parents has a lot of role to play. They have to actually send their, their words here to get the requisite training. You can of course force a horse to the stream but cannot force it to drink water. This is a wake up call and rallying cry to all Deltans to key into this God given initiative. Alright, let's digress a little from speaking with the member representing Ugeli South constituency in the Delta State House of Assembly, Comrade Ruben Izeze. I found out that this government is committed to improving vocational education as he has shown in his constituency. Let us hear from him. The quintessential politician would want to do something I want to make a lot of noise about it. But I see touching a life as giving. And my concept and understanding of giving is what the right hand gives to the left. But eventually, I got to realize that that strategy isn't working. I can tell you, over the past two years, I have set up a young man in his block industry in Opare. I've assisted another one to set up his bar in the same Opare. I have assisted a young man to become a crane operator. He's still going through training. That cost about 300000 for the training. He's still undergoing that training. I've assisted another one who wants to be a, want to be a pipeline welder. That was another 300000 He's there. He's also undergoing the training. I've supported the wives of constituents who want to go into trade or those who are trading. I've supported them with a micro grant ranging between 300000 100000 200000 50000 depending on the kind of trade they are into. I've done all this quietly without talking about it even though I have my my data. I've assisted a couple of young men who want to be plumbers. I've assisted those who want to be tilers to learn trade. After they finished, I was able to start them up with their starter packs. One who is a furniture man, I was able to get him a spraying machine for his furniture. And we, we've been doing this quietly. And we do hope that um, the God who rewards good will reward us. Um, Recently, with the assistance, totally with the assistance, I must say this, of a very old friend who has become a brother. And he has become my father's first son. He looked at the scenario in Nigeria today, saw my challenge and said, ah, the you I know, with this economy, you want to do so much, but you can't succeed in doing so much. I have this very big farm. Why don't you pick constituents, one one per word, Bring them. I'll train them for you. Every six months, you bring another batch. So, right as we speak, 11 of our youths who showed up to you, the selection committee selected them. I was not involved in the process. They are right now in Lawali and Da Farms at Oropwe. It's a resident program. They've been there for two months now. They'll be there for another four months to learn poultry and fisheries. When they finish, the next batch will move in. And... We intend to continue that program till such a time that we leave public office as members of the Delta Citizens Assembly. Furthermore, 
Our only contribution to that program is that I pay them a stipend of 10,000 a month. He does everything. Great man. Shola Debayo. It is still corporate image profile, but I must say at this juncture that we would achieve a better Delta Nigeria if we collectively and individually function in our small capacity. Because according to the definition of democracy, we all form the government. I am Harry to encourage power. Join the conversation via our social media platforms displayed on your screen. Till I come your way again next week, remember, together we will.